Meredith. This is Timothy Meredith. I'm making this recording in response to some things that were said in a revival in Gainesville, Georgia on the 27th of June 2012 as well as some things that were said on the 29th. Now, these things were said by Elder Archie Watkins of the National Convention of the Churches of God Holiness. He made some statements about the things that I teach in the Bible and I'm very displeased with the things that he said. He impugned that really we shouldn't be teaching and that the people that listen to what I teach are going to hell. He didn't say which hell. Those that are familiar with the scripture know that there are, diff there are four different words that are used for hell in the scripture. I won't go into that right now. But I went there on the 29th, two days after he had said that those that have left the church of God are going to hell. And that there are some wannabe people that were looked over to be preachers and they went out and started something else and they're going to hell. And as well, there's sometimes people will come back and speak at a funeral and say that this is where they got this start. They don't know why you're saying it. You're still going to hell. So I'm responding to this because he doesn't really know this, but there are a lot of people, many different parts of the world that listen to what I teach. And should they ever hear that this is the statement that was made and I didn't address it, that's totally uncharacteristic for me not to, uh, to, to try to stop the gainsayers. The individual that makes statements like that should be held accountable. So number one, I'm going to categorically say Archie Watkins lied. How do, why do I say he lied? First of all, when you say or when he says that if they go and they meet in a home or that the only place that God is is where his name is recorded and he's talking about the church of God, that's a lie. Or Jesus himself said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Not only that, the early assemblies, they met in homes. Yes, sometimes they met in synagogues, but the synagogues is definitely not the same thing as what we would call the church. Eutychus fell out of a window. Sosthenes was in a, one, and I won't even go through all of that. I want to expedite the time. I asked different people before Archie came to preach. Now, let me say Elder Archie. That's his title. Before Elder Archie Watkin came, and again, those of you that are in different parts of the world understand this was someone saying that what you listen to when you listen to me teach and uh, the people that come to our assembly, we're going to hell. And I'm going to deal, deal with what he said. When I went there, I asked the people, did he say those things? One of their deacons, one that's retired, one that not only is retired from one, he may be getting ready to retire from something else. He doesn't need their money. I talked to the pastor there. He didn't give me a straight answer. But the deacon said, well, I don't know how he meant it. I talked to another deacon, and I've talked, I talked to more than one person. So I came there prepared to let him defend the statement that he made, and if he could prove it, pay him. I brought checkbooks with me, because I was going, I told the pastor that I'd give this man $2,000 if he could prove me wrong. Well, after he got through teaching and talking about how he followed his leader explicitly, no matter what he did, I asked this man point blank, his name is Archie Watkins, did you say these things? He said, no. Did you say those that meet, if they meet in a home, are going to hell? He said, no. I asked him, did he say that those that left the National Convention of the Churches of God Holiness are going to hell? He said, no. He categorically lied. He's a coward. A coward. If you can say those things and you don't want to let people, when they ask you about it, you're a coward and you're a liar. And the very person, me, that you are saying that are go is going to hell, whether it's by direct or implication, I'm the one that left. 
then you are a coward and a liar as well as a bully because the things that you were teaching there that night was to help keep those people that still come there, the few that still come, to not leave. And on top of that, you are speaking ignorantly when you're saying that this is where the Bible said God's name is recorded. When you go back and see when God said in his word, the place where he brings people and where his name was recorded, that's way back in the Pentateuch, and there was not even an English language there. And when you make the statement that the church of God, there's 12 scriptures that say that is the only thing that God has, and you imply and you state categorically that's the name of God's church, that shows a lack of understanding the English language. When it says church of God, it belongs to the whole assembly belonged to God before there ever was a church called the church of God. I'm very disappointed because I had witnesses that were there that heard him say it. And therefore, I'm stating publicly for those that are a member of that assembly and those that listen to me that I would like him to either admit what he said or take me to court for calling him a liar. Then I can subpoena the people that were there from different places in their assembly and we can get this out. This is a public challenge to him and by extension, should he want to use my uncle or Elder Roger Owens or his bishop or any of the members of that assembly, with equal time I will publicly debate them and show that what is being said is a categorical liar or a categorical lie. Then that Friday night when I was there, the 29th, I heard him say, you should follow your leader no matter what, like he did when he was there in a place called Cleveland, Ohio. He said, because Joshua followed Moses, and you never find anywhere where Joshua corrected Moses, especially when he hit the rock. The statement that he didn't make is that there is nowhere in the scripture to say that Joshua knew that Moses was supposed to talk to the rock for the water to come out. But if one reads Numbers 27 and the 18th verse, they will find out that Joshua only got a part of Moses' spirit. Secondarily, Joshua never reached the level of Moses, neither did anyone else in the scripture until it came to our Lord Jesus Christ. Moses was the lawgiver. And according to the book of Hebrews, I believe around the third chapter, it talks about Moses having a house and Christ being Lord over that house. Those type of things were used to say that because I left this assembly, I wasn't under the leadership and that I didn't follow the protocol that's supposed to be followed like he did. And I'm supposed to be, according to what he says, outside of God's will. I submit to you that there is no one in the, nowhere in the Bible where people are told to follow people, whether they're right or wrong. The only person that demanded things like that were wicked kings like Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who got himself some base fellows. When David was up under Saul, he did not do everything that Saul said. He corrected Saul plenty of times. Even little Samuel had to correct Eli, and Eli was the high priest. Paul corrected James, and I know for a fact that the Church of God says that James was the first bishop. He corrected James, and the Catholic Church said that Peter was the first pope. He corrected Peter and all those in Acts chapter 2 that was caught in a dissimulation. I really have a problem with Archie lying and saying that he didn't say those things. So what I did was I did an interview with Sister Faye Merritt, and I allowed Sister Faye Merritt to speak, and she actually has a thing that she said if Archie comes, she'll tell him to the face. I'll let you all hear that. Lastly, it is not always that people in that church of God follow leadership completely because there was an explosion that burned three people, Marilyn and Jane and Roy Merritt, 
third degree burns all over their bodies, and they suffered with it up until the time Marilyn died, and Roy and Jane Merritt still suffer from that. Bishop T.P. Burris in that church told the pastor then, Elder Oliver, let those people sue. Elder Oliver chose not to. He kept them in his house and sequestered them and made people watch them. A man by the name that they called Elder James Finley tried to help those people, and guess what? They saw to it that this man would be taken to California, and Elder James Finley was going to sue this church. I submit to you that following leadership, if he had done that, those people would not be in the same pain and suffering that they are in now. There are many other things that I could talk about, but I just really wanted to state, number one, he lied. And I'm going to deal with, for the sake of those people and those that listen to me, what does Hebrews 13 and 7 and 13 and 17 mean? Does it mean follow people irrespective of what God say? Does it mean that when an assembly or a church or even me, if I start teaching and now we have a tradition, a tradition that comes from Tim or a tradition that comes from man, that I follow the tradition of man and lay aside the commandment of God. Well, if you go to Mark 7, you'll have an idea of how Jesus deals with that kind of thing. So this is it. Archie Watkins is a liar. He lied about saying he didn't say that we were going to hell if we left that church. He lied about saying that an individual comes back and he's left the church of God, he's going to hell, and that God does not meet with us. One. Number two, he is a coward because I asked him to his face. Number three, he is a bully, uses scare tactics to try to make people think that if they leave a church that's not really teaching them God's word, but just picking and going through the scriptures instead of teaching them the whole counsel of God that they're going to hell. He's a liar. And I want him to either face me publicly so we can talk about it or sue me if he thinks I slandered him. I think that's enough for me to say right now. I can deal with more things in the future because I believe that it's imperative that people can go and look and see what Archie stands for. Let's look and see what his uh, discipline book talks about. It, it should be published on the web. I, I, I know how to do it. I know how to get that done. I need to get his rules and regulations public on, public on the web. And I should have that done, I would say, before this month is over. And so people can go and see what you really teach. Cult watch groups need to know what's being taught about God. And whenever it Christian, Christianity will not be addressed and when it seeks to go out and destroy the faith of people that's teaching the truth, then I feel it should be answered. So as Jesus told those people when they came to arrest him, whom do you seek? He said, Jesus. He said, if you seek me, let these go. If you have a problem with me, Archie, or any other person that has a problem with me, don't seek the people that listen to me. Seek me. I'm willing to not only answer it, I'm ready to do what Second Peter chapter 3 and 15 says. Give every man an answer according to the hope that's in me, with meekness and respect. Thank you for listening.